here's what I'm thinking in my head. V and R1 are held constant. So we don't know what they are. We just know that they are constant values. So even though they are variables, we treat them like they were a number. Okay, we treat them like they were a number. Um, and the question is what resistance R2, so we are solving for R2, so to speak, produces maximum power. When I read maximum anything, I am thinking derivative equal to zero, and I'm solving for some value. Okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to find my critical points, and then I'm going to go from there. Okay, so maximum power, I need to take the derivative of this function. R2 is my only variable. So, um, P prime is equal to, we need to use the quotient rule because we do have variables in the top and the bottom. So, we have low D high, okay, but the top, V and R1 are constants, R2 is the variable, so the derivative of that would be V R1, okay, it's just like we had 8x or something in the top, the derivative of that is just the constant, minus pi times the derivative of the bottom, the bottom is a chain rule, So bring down the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent, or when you subtract 1, it's just 1, times the derivative of the inside. Well, R1's a constant, so the derivative of a constant is 0. R2 is a variable. It's just like x. The derivative of x is 1, so I'm going to put the times 1, but it's essentially going to go away here in a minute. All over the bottom squared. Well, the bottom is already squared, so squaring the squared becomes the fourth power. Okay, so maximum means critical numbers, so we need to set the derivative equal to zero um, and also find out where it's undefined. So we're going to set the top and the bottom equal to zero. And in the process of doing that, I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit so that it looks more like we're used to. Okay, put the VR1 in front of the R1 plus R2 squared. Put the 2 in front of the, two, uh, the VR1, R2, R1 plus R2. Set the numerator equal to 0. Also, the denominator. Okay, now obviously we have a whole lot of variables in that first one, okay, to deal with. But remember, they're not all variables. But anytime you see an expression like this, you should probably be thinking, I need to factor in some way or another. Okay, so let's look at what these two expressions have in common. They both have these. They both have r sub 1. They both have r1 plus r2. One of them is squared, one of them is not, so I can only use one of them. Okay, so I use my bracket to put the result of what I have left. Okay, so for the first term right here, what I have left is a factor of R1 plus R2. I'm not going to put parentheses around it because there's just one of them. I'm going to end up having to combine it here in a second. In the second term here, it's minus. We didn't take that 2 out. We didn't take that R sub 2 out. And... Uh, we took all the other stuff. That was part of the GCM. So, for this to be equal to zero, we've got several um, possibilities here. We have one, two, three things times each other. So, B times R sub 1 is equal to zero. 
r sub 1 plus r sub 2 is equal to 0. And then we also have r sub 1 minus r sub 2 equal to 0. Now, this is where practicality comes into play. V and R1 are held constant. Okay, it makes no sense for the voltage to be zero. It makes no sense for resistor one to be zero. So that first expression right there really makes no sense. Okay, V times R sub one should not be zero. Because your voltage is definitely not going to be zero. There's no point in having a resistor there if it's equal to zero because the resistor is, is supposed to reduce the current. Okay, uh, the second expression, if we solve that if by just moving one term to the other side, we get the R sub 1 is equal to negative R sub 2. Well, resistors can't have negative values. Okay, resistors can't have negative values, so that answer doesn't make any sense. The last one gives us that R sub 1 is equal to R sub 2. Well, that could be a possibility that the two resistors have equal uh, resistance uh, capabilities. So that's probably what we're looking at. But let's not forget that we do have another situation over here where the denominator is equal to zero because that causes our derivative to be undefined, which is also a potential for critical points. Yes, at It doesn't matter either. It, that's also solved for R2, just the other way around. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. R2 is by itself. So it's the same difference. Uh, <clears throat> we solve this other one. Okay. The opposite of raising something to the fourth power is taking the fourth root. Fourth root of zero is still zero. Well, looky there, we're back in that situation where we've got a negative resistance which is not possible so that does not create a critical point um, so our only option here is when the two resistors are equal to each other that's what's going to produce maximum power uh, now we're not given an interval if we were given an interval we should check it if we were given values then we could check um, we could check to ensure that that's a maximum but since this is just in general, then that is your only option. That's your critical number when the resistance uh, is equal to the other resistor. So that's got to be the answer. Okay. Now, uh, what I was saying was if we had specific values, then we would put, if that was R2 is equal to 7, then we would put our 7 on the number line and check like 5 and... Um, 9 or 6 and 8 and guarantee what are we looking for for a maximum yes for the derivative to change from positive to negative okay we're looking for the derivative to change from positive to negative for that to be a maximum um, but we don't have specific values to plug in that was our only critical number so we're just going to assume that that is the correct answer right there when the two resistors are equal to each other.